going to do another exciting unboxing video. So I've been gone from home for a couple of days and I've just come back and there were three, well actually that's a lie, there were two packages awaiting me and then today this other package arrived magically on my doorstep. It's like Christmas. So I'm going to uh, unbox this and discuss whatever it is I happen to have bought, but of course I've sort of forgotten, you know, <laughs> and um, discuss where I bought it and why I bought it and how you can do the same if you like. So let's get started. Okay, crafting scissors. This is not funny. You can't open anything with crafting scissors. Bad husband, no biscuit. And these are probably not going to work for deep boxes either, but we'll go ahead and use these on the VHL package. So this has been shipped from Pakistan. Ah, it's one of my vintage tapestries. Look at that beautiful brown. Now, of course, that's not the actual tapestry. That is the backing of the tapestry. So what I have found is that a lot of vintage reproduction tapestries that were made about 50 years ago have somehow made their way to Pakistan, and I'm not certain how that is, but these are items that are not made in Pakistan. They're generally made in France. So let's see. Oh, oui. so this is hearing. This is one of the, this is one of the six Lady and the Unicorn Tapestries, La Dame à l'Élicorne, which is in the Musée du Cligny in Paris. And this one happens to be woven by the company um, Jean Ponsu, which you can tell by this label here. So it was indeed woven in France, Pointe du La Loin, which is a specific kind of weaving, in this case, this kind of weaving technique, which is actually not the original tapestry weaving technique. It's a um, more modern one, and it's presumably easier and cheaper than the original weaving technique. But this is a very nice reproduction. It is actually wool. I can feel it. It's got that prickle of wool, and it is actually backed with uh, wrought iron hanging bars, these twisted. You're supposed to put hooks in the wall and then you hang this on the hook. And that is indeed what we will be doing. So, tapestry number one. I think I purchased this for a hundred and something dollars. Considering that these sell new for about eight hundred dollars, that's a pretty good deal. So, I actually bought this on eBay by searching for um, used unicorn tapestry, I think is how, how I did it. Okay, so there's one tapestry. Now I just have to figure out where I want to put it because my house is actually filling up with tapestries, which is fine. My goal is to have every square inch of wall covered in tapestry. So why tapestry? Well, aside from the fact that I'm trying to create a beautiful 15th century space here at home, tapestries actually serve a function, and not just an aesthetic purpose. The function is to actually add insulation to your walls, and that was their original function as well. So it actually will make your home both warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer because it adds a layer of insulation to your walls so the effects of the outside world are thereby mitigated. So you get form, function, and aesthetics. It's a win-win situation. Now the reason that I generally or uniquely buy vintage tapestries that were woven more than 20 years ago is because about 20 years ago they started adding polyester and other fibers to the weave. So then you end up with these petrochemicals in your tapestries, which of course creates microplastics in the environment. It off gases, it out gases, does all of, all of the things you do not want for a healthy home. Whereas ones that were reproduced 20 years ago or more tend to be linen and wool and or cotton, which are all natural fibers and have a much lower footprint. Also, the reason I don't want new ones is because by going with used items, I'm not adding to the environmental footprint of a product. I'm taking something that already exists and giving it new life. So let's see what this one is. Ha! 
This is also a Lady and the Unicorn tapestry. This is La Touche, touch, or the Le Touche, excuse me, touch. You can see she's touching the unicorn's horn right there. And uh, my Freudian fans out there will probably have all sorts of phallic things to say about that. But sometimes a woman touching a unicorn's horn is just a woman touching a unicorn's horn. Now this is interesting. I haven't seen this technique before. This one had these loops sewn into it, so presumably one could put a rod through it. But you could also just hang these from hooks as well. So could go either way. That's a, that's, that's a new one to me. Now this, while the fabric is definitely woven, it's a heavy weave, this has actually been silk screened. It's been hand painted. So the artist reproduced the original by painting onto the fabric which is also a really time-consuming process. And this was a fashion for uh, several decades to reproduce these tapestries, not by weaving them, but by painting the patterns onto heavily tapestry-woven fabric. Interesting. Um, it's lined in a heavy linen burlap, so it gives it a nice heft. And even though there is no label, I can see, there goes that box, there is no label that I can see. I can feel, based on the touch, that there is wool in this and there is linen in this. I don't think any cotton. So I, my feeling is this is probably a wool linen blend, which when you've spent as much of your life rolling around in fabric as I have, you just do develop a feeling for it. Or I guess is if you've spent as much of your life rolling around in fabric as my cat has. Okay, this is a nice big one. I also uh, obtained this one, I think, for $100, and it's a sizable, sizable tapestry. So, yay. Okay, and final box. Now this one, this is the one I think it is, but let's see first. So there are a whole host of 15th and 16th century tapestries in the Musée de Cluny and in the Metropolitan Museum of Art that uh, have, for, for which it has been fashionable for about a hundred years actually, to make reproductions so that people can have their beauty in their own homes. And these reproductions come in a huge variety of sizes from the teeny tiniest two by three feet or even one by two feet sizes all the way up to almost original size in some cases. And I say in some cases because <laughs> There are some original tapestries from the 15th and 16th century that are literally 15 by 20, 20 by 30 feet in size. They're a massive, massive undertaking. So there are not many people whose homes are big enough to accommodate a tapestry of that size, let alone many people who have the pocketbook to afford a reproduction of that size. was certainly packaged in a way to prevent anyone from accessing it without going to quite a bit of effort, so, okay. Interesting, there's random other bits here. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. This is really quite a surprise. I wasn't expecting this. So they, the vendor included in this, wow. Okay, there's things within things. This is not expected. This book, um, which is a William Shakespeare's Tragedies in a very beautiful bound edition. Oh, Titus Andronicus, that's a really uplifting one. Yeah, wow, so this was someone's in someone's private library at some point. This is quite a nice little edition here with Bible, Bible thin paper, but nevertheless, hmm, very nice. And oddly, these photographs, I'm suspecting the vendor was unaware that these photographs were in here, but these are really beautiful black and white prints. Um, I no date on them. Interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting that little bonus. Interesting. Let's see what other strange little bonuses. And then, oh, this is pretty, and also I interesting oh my god this feels like it might have been one of from the eve of a buddhist temple actually 
So it's hand carved and painted. And it definitely, to my eye, has um, some characteristics like this, this layering of the color and these colors even that really do remind me of um, Buddhist temples that we visited in Korea. Interesting. I don't. I definitely did not buy this, but yay for bonus items, I guess. Oh wow, there's just this is <laughs> so. Oh wow. Oh oh, I see. That's so this is part of a box. Oh my goodness. Okay, you are, dear viewer, you are experiencing in the moment. I really had. This is not. Um, dramatized surprise this is real I had no idea that this gorgeous hand carved wooden box and that is obviously the lid for this box would be here and apparently it has this gorgeous little pair of embroidery snips and a vintage spool of thread it's wool and that is probably mercurized cotton I'm going to bet or or wood not wool rather well then, continuing down our adventure in this box of mysteries, um, there's a, a little tiny dust broom. I, I have a feeling that I'm not... Maybe a tassel? No it's, no, it's definitely not a tassel. It's definitely a dust broom. This is corn. Uh, interesting. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue down the rabbit hole, shall we? Ah, oh, there's the label for the tapestry. It is the main item that I bought in here. It is in fact a tapestry. Um, and this is uh, from the studio of Rambouillet, which is a very high quality silk screening studio. They produced, I don't know if they're still producing. Honestly, I should have looked it up. If I really cared about your edification, I would have looked that up for you. I didn't though, so. Um, this is a, they make a lot of, they used to make a lot of really super high quality silk screened reproductions. And by silk screening, I mean hand painted on heavily tapestry woven fabric. The reproductions are very, very accurate based relative to the original. And this one um, says that this is located in the Musée of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And it's La Licorne à la Fontaine. I don't think that's true though. Oh, yes it is, yes it is. The Unicorn at the Fountain. This is one of the tapestries that was donated to the Metropolitan Museum of Art by, mm, it's either Rockefeller or Carnegie, I think. It's one of the robber barons who, you know, towards the end of his life, wanted to get into heaven rather than hell for all of his sins in acquiring his wealth the way he did. So he donated his immense, immense collection of medieval objets d'art, day-to-day um, -day objects and tapestries to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And from there, all along with the cloisters itself. Oh my, okay, this is, this is, this is a very large one. I might actually have to let my husband come and help unfold this one because this is, Upside down. Apparently upside down. <laughs> As you can tell, this is completely improvised since we have no graceful choreography planned for you at all. So. Yep. Unfortunately, I'm not there to uh, pan across it right now. This is. So, yes. I can't see it. I hope it's pretty. <laughs> Oh my, wow. So this is also made on, uh, painted on a linen wool blend. And again, I can feel it by touching it. There's that prickle of wool. And this is the unicorn at the fountain. It's part of the Hunt of the Unicorn series. And supposedly, one of the theories is the unicorn is an allegory for Christ in this particular hunt. And this is the unicorn purifying the water in the fountain. <laughs> wow, okay, so this is massive. Uh, I feel like I should buy another house for this, for this amazing tapestry. Um, again, it has the metal bars on the back for hanging on hooks. 
And that also allows it, by hanging it on hooks, it allows it to be enough away from the wall to not trap moisture and develop mildew. So I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a consummate desert. So the likelihood of moisture building up anywhere is quite laughable. But in most normal places in the world where humans would reside, moisture might be an issue. Wow, this is amazing. Um, I'm clearly going to have to hang it so I can actually view it properly. I don't even think our floor is, well, I guess we could clear our floor up so that we can actually lay it out. But, wow, okay. Um, and there was some, there was some fabric that this was sent with and it was put in a Louis Vuitton bag. Interesting. It tells me something about the person from whom I bought it. <laughs> and this length of of hemmed cotton fabric was included as well. Huh. Okay, well, that was a box of surprises that I wasn't anticipating. So, yeah, if you are interested in decorating your house with tapestries, again, my recommendation is to look on Etsy and look on eBay. Make sure you look for used and not new because the new ones are made in China, generally. They're made out of polyester and viscose and other fibers, which is always a great label. Um, so petrochemicals galore. Their quality is much lower. They don't have the same uh, depth. And of course, their dyes generally run if they get wet, not that you should be submersing your tapestries. But were water damage to happen in your home, then you would end up with runny tapestry, and that would be very sad. Also, interestingly, in this case, buying the vintage tapestries is way less expensive. I mean, orders of magnitude less expensive than buying the same tapestry reproduction type, same size, brand new. So that has been your tip. eBay, Etsy, ta medieval tapestry used, unicorn tapestry used, and you will get find all these sorts of delightful items, ways to beautify your home while helping insulate it. Okay, well, that's been your unboxing. There's a mess here, so I'm going to let my husband clean that up. I think it's only fair that we try to lay out this massive tapestry and try to show it to you in its full glory. So I'm going to take a moment to do that and then you'll be able to understand what it is I've exactly purchased here. So give us a moment to straighten things up a little bit for you. So the Hunt of the Unicorn Tapestries were apparently commissioned and owned originally by Anne of Brittany who was a queen of France not once but twice by marriage. And the, uh, you can see, if you look around the whole picture, there is an, a cipher of an A and a backwards E scattered in all four corners of the tapestry and in the center on the fountain. And that is apparently her cipher because her name was spelt um, A-N-E. And so her cipher was an A and a backwards E. So she has actually interspersed herself in this entire series. And the, the unicorn, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is a, an allegory of Christ. The unicorn is Christ, the savior of humanity, pure and purifying, who will redeem us for our sins. And the virgin that frequently crops up in these tales of the unicorn is, of course, the Virgin Mary. And that is why the unicorn is attracted to the virgin, because that is his mother, in essence, in this allegorical setting. Um, the hunter, the hunter in this series is supposedly supposed to represent the Archangel Gabriel, who announces the birth of Christ to the then Virgin Mary, who is probably quite overwhelmed to hear such news. So let's take a closer look, shall we? Here is a closer look at this beautiful work of art. So you can see the hunters here, all accoutred in their gorgeous hunting gear. And obviously these are not random, low-born gentlemen, or not gentlemen, these are gentlemen, in fact, dressed very fashionably for the date of 1499, which is when this tapestry was supposedly woven. And you can see there's this mille fleurs style, which literally means thousands of flowers. 
and that's all the dense, lush green foliage with the splashes of color interspersed. It was very fashionable in the late 15th and early 16th century to have this motif in one's tapestries. And actually, the realism that the artists managed to capture in the flora and the fauna of this particular series is very impressive and has actually been written about in uh, several dissertations, actually. So we have all sorts of creatures. We have bunnies and we have stags and we have angry dogs, maybe? Um, then we have some sort of weasel and we have a leopard, you know, our more exotic flora, or in this case fauna, I should say, from Africa, which these artists clearly never saw, but they heard it described. <laughs> Um, and then we've got the hunting dog on its collar. And then, of course, at the very center, the unicorn kneeling to purify the water. The unicorn horn was, report, was purported to contain purifying and healing properties, and that's why they were sought after for medicinal purpose. They were ground up and, and compounded into medicines. Of course, we know now that unicorn horns, as people thought were, in the Middle Ages and even, I think, up to the 18th century, maybe, were actually narwhal horns, which is why medieval unicorns are depicted with such long horns, because everyone thought that these narwhal horns were the unicorns. Of course, they weren't, but they were definitely beautiful and ivory, just narwhal ivory. So this is the gorgeous tapestry that I purchased on eBay. It is in fantastic shape, and it came with all those delightful extras, so... I think I can say this was a highly successful purchase. I am exceedingly pleased, and now I have to figure out where on earth I'm going to hang this thing. Oh, there's a pheasant. Very cute little pheasant. Drinking the water. Presumably that's the water before the unicorn has purified it, so I'm not certain exactly what fate is awaiting that poor pheasant. So thank you, Anne of Brittany, for this delightful series of tapestries. I'm going to keep my eye out to see if I can find reproductions of the others in this series. I now officially have all of La Dame à la Licorne tapestries, so now I'm going to be looking for the rest of the hunt of the unicorn tapestries. Then eventually I won't fit in this house anymore, and we will just have to buy a larger demands in order to accommodate my burgeoning collection. No, it's, it's not a problem, really. I don't have a tapestry addiction. Stop saying that. video. There's a huge mess to clean up, so I'm going to have my husband do that. But in the meanwhile, if you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it or any of the kind of content that I've already published, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really would like to support my endeavors and feel that they enrich your lives, then please do feel free to subscribe to my Patreon page. Happy hunting!